I had an interesting idea recently to examine my UV IR cut filter to determine whether it actually gives me noticeable improvements in star images. Of course, it is considered common knowledge among astrophotographers that this is true, but the scientist in me wanted to see the proof. And to be frank, the filter I was using was so inexpensive, I was a bit skeptical. Anyhow, I thought it would be useful and a fun little distraction. I think it is a fascinating study, so buckle up if you are curious. To get a good magnification and view of the stars, I used my highest focal length refractor and imaging rig shown here, the Sviboni SV503 ADED doublet refractor with a 0.8x reducer flattener that provided a focal length of about 448 millimeters. Since I do most of my imaging with that reducer flattener to reduce the F ratio from F7 to 5.6, I felt it was good to include it in this analysis. As you will see, for part of this analysis, I use an interesting application feature of the ASI Air that estimates average star sizes for any image captured in the preview mode. I believe this application is intended primarily for use as a focus guide prior to imaging. This is the UV IR cut filter that I have owned and used for the prior year or two. It is branded and sold by Zerboni, the same maker as my ADED telescope. As you can see, the pricing on this with the recent discount is surprisingly inexpensive. Its spectroscopic transmittance profile shows robust blockage of both UV and IR light outside of the visible spectrum. Of course, similar to all other filters I own, I have no way to verify the specifications and simply must trust the manufacturer's claims. Being a little suspicious of its low cost, I decided that it would be ideal to compare this filter to another leading brand. Of course, the first name to come to mind was the market leader, perhaps, Bader Planetarium. Shown here are the specifications of the Bader UV IR cut filter and all the additional engineering features built into it. This information was taken from the Agena Astro webpage just to show you the price comparison to the Zviboni filter. The 2-inch Bader filter is over 8 times more expensive than the Zviboni filter by comparison. As a disclaimer, I should point out that I requested this filter to test it from the support team at Bader Planetarium in Germany, and they accepted my request. However, they instructed me to contact their local Japan distributor to seek their cooperation to lend me a filter. That local distributor is the Kokusai Koki shop located just northwest of Kyoto here in Japan. They kindly agreed to lend me a filter for this study. Surprisingly, I was not aware at all of this supplier until this time, and I now know they have a very extensive portfolio of astronomy and astrophotography products. Their home screen webpage is shown here. Now, downstream of my OTA, here are the components attached to the focuser. Besides the Zaboni dedicated reducer flattener I already described, I have a ZWO filter drawer and use the ASI 533 planetary or DSO camera for this study. From the flattener to the sensor, the standard 55 millimeters of distance is required to achieve clear focus using these imaging optics. Most of the data I will show you comes from screwing the filters into the front end of the reducer flattener. I also included a little data when using the filter in the filter drawer as a brief comparison. And for your information, the ASI 533 MC camera design, like all ZWO imaging cameras, have a glass protection window in front of the CMOS sensor. The website lists some specifics of that glass as being D32-2-AR for the pro version and Phi32-2-AR for the planetary version. I contacted ZWO customer service directly and learned that D stands for diameter and Phi is the same as D. It is just the new notation they will use going forward for diameter. AR stands for anti-reflective coating and the glass is transparent to both UV and IR light. It is not a filter. 
Okay, so armed with that information, let's dive into the experiment and data. This is a screenshot of my ASI Air Control software after taking a 30 second exposure of the star Sulafat in the constellation of Lyra or Lyra, however you say that name. On the left, you can see that I activated the annotation feature and it circled and labeled the star in the field of view. This is a fairly bright star located 620 light years away from Earth. I selected it for this study because it was very close to the zenith at around the time of this study. Also, there was a nice pattern of stars of various magnitudes surrounding it in the same field of view. Now, if the attention here is to examine and compare star sizes with and without filters, achieving and holding an optimal focus is critical to this experiment. Basically, this concerned me a bit because I am old school and minimal in the use of my high-tech imaging equipment. I do not have an automated focuser. I do my focusing with a Batonoff mask, which is basically an eyeball judgment. But I think, as you will see, the data was consistent and manual focusing really was not an issue. Another critical variable is guiding. If we have star drift, even with good focus, our stars will appear inflated or more specifically oblong. So guiding and or a good polar alignment is critical. But since this experiment is using only 30 second exposures and the guiding was at sub arc second values all night long, I think we can safely conclude this variable was also under control. Oh, by the way, the calculated resolution of this imaging rig under good seeing conditions is 1.73 arc seconds per pixel, and the field of view is 1.45 degrees by 1.45 degrees of sky. Along with the annotation function of the ASI Air, there is also a feature called Detect. When you select this feature, the software selects about 20 independent stars in the field of view, draws a ring around them, and assigns them a size value. At the top of the screen here, you can see the average star size value of the selected sample was 2.10. In parentheses next to that number is the number 3.63, which I suspect is an estimate of the size of the star in arc seconds, but I am not entirely certain. This selection and calculation feature of Detect is very consistent. Shown here is another field of view that yield in value of 2.16 for the average star size after a good focus. If you deselect the Detect button and re-engage it on the same image, it selects exactly the same stars again and reaches the same average star size number over and over again. Five consecutive results are shown here for the average star size number calculated on the exact same image. They were all 2.16 units. Well, if you do this again, and this time do star size calculations on multiple consecutive images, each of 30 second exposure times, you see this kind of result. Firstly, the average star size calculated number varies but the deviation is quite small. Among these nine different photos, I saw numbers varying from 1.92 up to 2.16 with an average value of 2.080 units. Interestingly, if you look very closely, you will see that the set of 20 or so stars selected for this calculation are different in every photo. There are some overlapping stars employed, but each photo is a uniquely different set. This is an important point, so please keep it in mind. Next, let's explore the effect of focus on these average star size calculations. This set of data, like the previous ones, comes from using no filter. The green star I put up in the upper left indicates perfect or good focus. Notice the symmetry of the Batonoff mask pattern, and also notice the excellent guiding profile. Under these perfect focus conditions, here is one example from a screenshot that shows the average star size is 2.28 units. Now let's purposely misalign the focus, skewing the Batonoff mask pattern slightly to the right in this image. 
This is just a slight misalignment causing poor focus, so I colored the upper left star yellow. And again, the guiding remained stable in at sub-arc second accuracy. Under these poor focus conditions, here is one example of a screenshot that tells me the value has now increased to 2.46. Well, that makes sense. Out of focus stars are bigger, and hence we expect the average star size to increase, and it did. Okay, now let's go for bad alignment, bad focus. Notice the central spike in the Batnoff mask pattern is significantly skewed to the right. This is even more out of focus than the prior example. And here the average star size value we get for this particular situation is a value of 2.10. Wait a minute, hold on. Let's review that again. Here are all three images, all three scenarios from perfect to poor to bad focus and all three values. It goes from 2.28 up to 2.46 and then down to 2.10. This was not what I expected. Let's analyze this for a moment and try to determine what's going on. Notice on this slide, I selected two stars that are both tagged in yellow and green and measured in the perfect and poor focus scenarios. They are assigned values that increase in the poor focus image. That makes sense. Star sizes should increase. But on the right image under bad focus conditions, these stars are ignored. They are not part of the set that is used to calculate the average star size. Conversely, on the right image under bad focus conditions, these two stars shown with the red arrows are part of the set. They are tagged and measured. But on the left two images, these stars are ignored in the calculations. So here's what I think is going on. The perfect focus and poor focus image analytics are selecting stars according to the algorithm that includes some overlapping stars found in each set. These scenarios and image patterns are similar enough that there is overlap for the algorithm. But in the bad focus condition, none of the stars selected in the prior two sets meet the criteria for selection by the algorithm. It is a completely different set of stars that are used. Furthermore, I have noticed that star values seem to never be less than roughly 1.6 or more than 2.8 in assigned values. This seems to be the working range of the algorithm for star selection criteria. And if this is true, which I strongly suspect it is, this throws a monkey wrench into the idea of using the detect function to exclusively analyze star sizes and compare different sets of data from group to group. Because if those groups are significantly different, the selected stars will be significantly different and the numbers won't be proportional. And we need that proportionality to be analytical and quantitative regarding these filter comparisons. I did not know all this information prior to the data collection on that night, so I naively and blindly proceeded with this investigation. But I'm glad that I did because it turns out that the differences between these sets were not so great, meaning there were many overlapping stars used in the calculations, and the quantitative values were reasonable and consistent with my predictions. Let's dive into it. The first set of data I will show you is using no filter. You can see here the focus was perfect. Oh, it was perfect. I did nothing wrong. It was a perfect focus. <laughs> also, the guiding was good, and one typical image is shown on this slide. On this next slide, I have taken nine consecutive images and displayed are the average star sizes calculated for each image and the average of all of those, which is 1.955. If you recall previously, my no filter images had an average star size values that were a bit higher than shown here. They were over 2.0. But those images were taken on a different prior night, presumably under different seeing conditions, and hence were slightly higher in value. The data I will show you from now on were all taken between 9 and 11 p.m. on the same night, 
just after Sulafet crossed over the meridian at an altitude of about 87 degrees high in the sky. During that two-hour time period of data collection, the seeing conditions are assumed to be unchanged, but I think it is a reasonable assumption. Now let's look at the data provided by using the Bader UV-IR cut filter attached to the reducer flattener upstream of the lens. Again, the focus is the best I can achieve manually using a Batonoff mask, and the guiding was fine. Here are nine consecutive images all analyzed by the ASI Air Detect algorithm that gives an average star size of 1.878. This number makes intuitive sense if the filter is working because it is lower than the no filter data. Next, let's look at the data collected when using the Zerboni UV IR cut filter. Again, good focus and good guiding is present. And the average star size value calculated by the ASI Air was 1.907. This is a quick look at some of these examples shown side by side. Visually, I believe you can actually see a difference in these images. The top row with no filter clearly appears to have brighter and fatter stars than the bottom two rows, and the average star size values of the bottom two rows are also less than the no filter control value at the top row. This all makes sense. But I want to caution you here not to put too much trust in the subtle value differences between the Bader and the Zverboni numbers. The lower the better, of course, but these numbers are so close and the statistical significance here is unknown. My data set was only nine images each. Plus, as discussed previously, the selected set of stars is not identical, although there is significant overlap. You can review that visual data for yourself in the previous slide of nine images each if you'd like but I found it to be an exercise in madness and eye strain and quickly gave up visually comparing nine images with 20 stars each to the other set of nine images with 20 stars each. It was not fun. I am sure you know the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, in this case, perhaps, a picture is worth a thousand data points. So on the next two slides, I selected one image from each set, magnified the image, aligned them to be sure they are properly proportioned, and circled some star patterns where you can clearly see the star reduction effect of these two filters when compared with the no filter image. Remember, these are each 30 second images and the only difference is the filter. In my opinion, the UV IR cut effect is readily visible for both filters, but visually, I cannot see any noticeable difference between the Bader and the Zverboni brand in this imaging setup. On this next slide, I put the filter in the filter drawer downstream of the reducer flattener and compared it to the image taken earlier upstream of the reducer flattener. With either filter, I personally do not see any difference in the quality of the image or star sizes when positioned upstream versus downstream. This is a little bit interesting because it is a known fact that refraction is inevitable and the filter glass will actually lengthen the back focus by the approximate amount of one third of the filter glass thickness. The Zverboni filter is 1.85 millimeters thick and the Bader filter is two millimeters thick. So the proper back focus should now be about 55.6 or 55.7 millimeters and not 55 millimeters as used in this imaging configuration using the filter drawer. I actually have a 0.6 millimeter shim that I placed between the camera and the filter drawer and I did take some photos, but they look no different than the filter drawer photos shown here on the left of this slide. I think that the imaging quality of this optical system is not of high enough resolution to be affected by the 0.6 millimeters of misalignment of the focus point. It simply does not matter in this imaging rig setup. Okay, let's summarize. The protective glass of the camera used in this study covering the sensor of the ASI 533 MC cameras does not block UV or IR light. The ASI Air Plus 
provided excellent consistency of average star size values within each set. But comparison of the average star size values across groups is only reasonably valid if the differences are subtle and there are overlapping stars selected in each group. The ASI Air star size algorithm seems to select stars that have a size within a limited range roughly corresponding to the assigned values of about 1.6 to 2.8. Potential sources of error for this study are guiding, but guiding was very good all night from 0.55 to 0.75 arc seconds, so I propose it was not a source of error. Sky quality. However, all night was good and cloudless, and the experiment only took two hours, during which time sky quality conditions are unlikely to change significantly, so it was also probably not a source of error. And focusing. While focusing was entirely manual and could potentially introduce bias in comparisons of intergroup measurements, but the data seemed to be consistent and predictable, so its error contribution was probably minimal. From this study, I can conclude that UV IR cut filters do provide a visually noticeable reduction in star sizes in astrophotography. The star reduction effect is most pronounced on star images of lower brightness, and the very bright or larger stars are not noticeably affected. Placement of the filter upstream or downstream of the reducer flattener makes no difference in the overall image quality in this imaging rig setup. On this imaging system, which includes a doublet lens design and small CMOS sensor, no difference in image quality was apparent between the high-end brand and low-end brand UV IR cut filter products. As for a direct filter comparison between Bader and Zviboni, for Bader, market price is over eight times higher than Zviboni. It is relatively expensive. However, its features and engineering specifications offer superior quality and durability and quality control. I encourage you to read its specs directly. It is quite impressive. Ergonomics, or handling, is vastly superior due to its deeper rim and more ridges. I can see this being much easier to handle, especially in colder weather. There is also less of a tendency to drop it or accidentally touch the glass, which is a frequent problem with more generic designs. Performance, well, it was similar to the other brand for this imaging rig configuration. And of course, Bader is a highly respected and trusted brand worldwide. For Zviboni, the filter is budget priced, very inexpensive, and I think it has high cost performance. It is a simple and generic two inch filter design. Its quality seems good, but that's just my personal opinion. Ergonomics, or handling, is similar to most brands. Frankly, it is cumbersome like most other brands, especially for people like me that use a filter drawer in imaging. The Bader design is much superior from a handling perspective. Performance? Well, it was similar to Bader for this imaging rig configuration. Zviboni is an emerging brand, it's a budget brand, and it has good market credibility. As for final words and a bit of speculation, I think that any multi-component equipment configuration, like the imaging rig used in this study, has limitations that may be dictated by one or more of its particular parts. Anything is only as strong as its weakest link. High-end optics such as a triplet or quadruplet ED glass refractor telescopes can give superior image quality with finer pinpoint stars. Employing budget accessories, filters, etc. on high-end imaging optics might be risky. Such budget accessories could become the weak link and negatively affect the overall performance, so it's important to keep that thought in mind. In my case, the imaging rig used in this study is a budget-priced doublet ED design. Its focal point for all visible wavelengths is not as tight as one would expect from a triplet design premium scope. So in my opinion, a budget-priced UV IR cut filter 
probably performs just fine on this imaging rig. The choice is ultimately yours to make based on your equipment and requirements. Your imaging optics quality should be a strong factor in your consideration for filters, but also your expectations on filter design, durability, quality control, and other personal preferences. Before closing, let me share a final word in a deep sky object photo. On one of the nights I was doing this analysis and taking these images of Silifat, there was about four hours when I could turn my rig toward a region in Cygnus and image an area of sky I never challenged before. This is a small reflection nebula, NGC 6914, located about 6,000 light years away. There is not much information to be found on this nebula online but I especially like the contrasting reflected blue colors against the dense red emission nebula background. Taken with an Optolong L-Extreme filter, my star sizes are well controlled, illustrating the kind of fine images one can achieve with only a doublet ED refractor like this one from Scriboni. Finally, Thank you for joining me on this slightly technical exploration using UVIR cut filters and the ASI Air functionalities. I hope it provided an insight or two that was useful to you. And as always, thank you for watching Astrophotography Japan. My name is Paul Chizjo, and I am an astrophotographer. <laughs>